Gentlemen, I think you know what time it is. It's time to chug the, the potion of life. Hold back and relax, everybody. <sighs> and we've been replenished. Life's good again. Anywho, back up, bro. Why the fuck are you guys always in my face? Back up. You see the black fur on right now? Black purr? Got this last month. No, sorry, not last month. Last year for Christmas. Mama Tello Incorporated. Thank you very much. You know, love Mama Tello. However, besides that, it's um currently uh, 10 degrees over here where I'm at. So that's amazing. That's always great. Uh, freezing our fucking balls off out here. That's fucking amazing. Besides that, I said I wanted to make a video on the rune wish list for season two of discovery i wanted to do this a couple days ago but i got subtracted with or sidetracked with uh you know all the news about gnomer coming out the 10 man and you know the other video i did the other day and then i had some irl stuff i had to do so i'm sorry couldn't put out this video sooner than i wanted but we're gonna go over uh what they are basically talking about on wowhead uh, talking about like you know like future runes they would like to see for each individual class I think they go over like three runes each for each class that they speculate might come out during phase two and I think it'd be cool uh, if they add you know three new runes per class for phase two that would be something you know spice it up maybe three runes to add to the belt slot which I think has been confirmed that the belt slot is going to be the new rune slot for phase two who knows if they add more I'm not sure what they're doing but uh, besides that uh, yeah, I think we just get into the video and let's start talking about some stuff. So as far as the Druid, right? Any of my Druid players out there, uh, one of my boys, he's a really nasty Druid and uh, I've been playing with him a lot. And um, I know a lot of Druids are asking for, you know, balance to be a little bit more solid. Balance doesn't really have a lot of love right now uh, in terms of like Resto Druid or Feral Druid currently in Phase 1. Um, and it would be really nice if they gave uh, Balance Druid... Uh, a new ability to make them a really viable spec as it was introduced like with Wrath, you know, so like having um, Eclipse, so let's go over Eclipse when you critically hit with Starfire, you have a 33% uh, chance of increased damage done by Wrath by 40%. When you critically hit with Wrath, you have a 20% chance of increasing your critical strike chance with Starfire by 40%. So with the whole Moonkin spec going crazy with that as well, um now each effect lasts 15 seconds and each has a separate 30 second cooldown both effects cannot occur simultaneously this would really add some crazy new rotation to balanced druids where it could be very possible especially when you're you know more geared up that balance spec can be extremely viable in phase two and more people are going to want to bring balanced druids a part of their raid groups or part of their dungeon groups depending on how the runes affect this particular spec of this class um i already think that it's lacking in terms of damage of the other following two specs um well not resto obviously it's lacking in terms of like you know the heal or more damage whether it's you do go feral or you go resto so making this class completely up to par is really good stuff and i would be really excited to see what they do especially with like the new stuff introduced with the star surge rune that you know everyone's doing star surge it's you know pretty nuts uh how much uh decent arcane damage this thing does actually does a lot of damage early on especially and it's one of like the main abilities with uh that you know a lot of uh druids a lot of people use with these type of runes so it would be very interesting to see how they play with this uh spec for balanced druids i'd be really excited so let's move on to berserk now this feral druid cooldown Let's talk about it. Also made its first appearance during Wrath. Has been redesigned numerous times over the last 15 years. From reducing energy costs to restoring combo points, no matter what iteration of Berserk is introduced, it would certainly enhance currently game uh, gameplay loop for Ferals. So for Berserk, let's go over it. When activated, this ability causes your Mangle Bear ability to hit up to three targets and have no cooldown. It reduces the energy cost of all your cat form abilities by 50%. Last 15 seconds, you cannot use Tiger's Fury while Berserk is active. Clears the effect of fear and makes you immune to fear for duration. That is a nutty ability, not only for PvE, but for PvP. The ability to get away from fears, especially from Warlocks and Shadow Priests, just priests in general, right? But that is just a nuts ability. Or you can say even Warriors, Intimidation Shout, you know, if you get, you know, shouted out. That is disgusting ability. And the fact that you have an ability to shift into cat form and reduce the energy cost from all your abilities by 50%, you're just dishing out damage. I mean, Feral Druids are doing really good right now in Phase 1. They're keeping up with damage with a lot of classes and they are really high in the totem pole so this is a would 
just only further increase the rotational kit and make them, you know, once again, more viable within more raid groups. Obviously, you're always going to want a druid no matter what, because, you know, you want the wild strikes. So this would be a really cool ability to bring into the rotation of uh, the druid. And I think it's a phenomenal class anyways. Uh, even right now, like druid is like arguably one of the best PvP classes as well. Besides PvE, PvP, they are extremely nasty in phase one with their kite ability and their way to get in and out of fights. And, you know, with stealth, it's just a really good class. Uh, Tree of Life. So looking into this, this is more of a, the resto spec. Uh, to answer the question, what is the single most iconic restoration druid spell in World of Warcraft? Should sooner or later it find its way into t uh, season discovery? The current dragonflight design as a major healing cooldown alone would make a massive difference for druid healers and classic content. So I read this line a little bit earlier because I was curious because I was I was reading through some of these so I can keep up with my knowledge how I wanted to go about this video right. And the thing is is that this is what I said in my paladin video too, is that I I was going over. And I said this to some of my friends in Discord. I was going over, like, runes that are in Dragonflight and, like, runes that are in retail that they can bring down to Classic. Now, I know there's some, uh, somebody said in my other video, it's like, oh, well, Saad's, like, basically boring. It's just rehash content. They're just stealing stuff from retail and bringing it to Classic. It's a new type of game, you know, like, and I'm not saying it's a new game, but it's a new, like, it's something different, right? It, it's not completely 100% different. Like, it's not like the whole game's changed, right? But it's testing out things that we've never seen in the classic ever before. So I don't mind if they take things from, like, newer eras of retail or RAV or previous expansions and try to change it up and switch it up and add some spice to it. You know what I mean? We're just testing the waters here. Obviously, after all, this is all just really just a giant beta to what they might do in the future, right? But overall, I'm really happy with, like, them adding new iterations of stuff. So if they wanted to add Tree of Life, right? You know, and let's look into uh, Tree of Life. Shapeshift into the Tree of Life, increasing healing done by 15%, increasing armor by 120%, and granting protection from polymorph effects. Functionality of uh, Regivation, Wild Growth, Regrowth, Entangling Roots, and Wrath is enhanced. Last 30 seconds, you may shapeshift in and out of this form during its duration. That is absolutely insane. And I honestly think they deserve it, because I know Wild Growth is like an extremely good ability right now. It's probably one of the main, if you check the logs on, you know, Warcraft logs, Wild Growth is the main ability a lot of, you know, you use. It's your main healing ability, right? But the problem with Druids right now, uh, Wrestle Druids, is they lack rotation full rotation utility that's what they lack utility compared to a priest priests have so much uh, healing with circle of healing prayer of mending power ward shield small heal big heal you know what i mean and wild growth is the only thing that druids have so priests kindly in my opinion right now i think they're like one of the best healers in the game because they have so much utility in terms of phase one i know like people probably say in the comments well priests no matter what are this end game or holy paladin winds up outscaling priests we don't know how things are going to work in sod we don't know the answers to anything so take all the knowledge you have even including myself and we have to dumb it down a bit and see what they add to the game what different gear what new runes you know what i mean like this is stuff that we're experimenting spare oh jesus i can't here we go stutter again forgive me father in heaven i didn't mean to say your name however all i'm saying is you know um this is stuff we have to experiment with, okay? And that's what I'm getting at. Like, we can't, we don't know the answers to, for everything. However, besides that, um, let's go into the hunter, okay? So, as far as the hunter goes, um, you know, the, the dream of the hunter is obviously, you know, having that survivalist melee spec, right? And getting crazy with melee damage, whether that's, you know, uh, you know, using an axe, you know, using some type of dual wield weapon if they want to, you know, explore down that route. Um, but, you know, right now at the moment, I've even seen hunters, you know, using flanking strike and going crazy with the Hydra. I've seen some that, that a lot of people are using Hydra build with hunters. And the fact that you can get the Hydra and get the bow at the same time, like hunters have a high high uh you know skill ceiling in terms of like how much damage they can do right now currently in phase one i know i've heard rumors that hunters drop off during the end game a lot of my friends have said that you know hunters are good now but they will drop off in terms of damage uh later on but currently at the moment hunters are nasty in general i know there's been a lot of nerfs to their pets but adding coordinated assault which would you know further increase the, the hit that they take right now and maybe keep them up to par in the end game to keep them viable with a lot of other classes, especially for survivalists, you know, um, you going with the melee build, this would be very intriguing. Uh, so you and your pet 
charge your enemy, kind of like a warrior charge, uh, striking them for a combined 125% attack power. Obviously, these numbers are not, you know, these they can change. Physical damage. Uh, you and your pet's bond is then strength for 20 seconds, causing your next, uh, pet's next basic attack to empower your next spell cast. So whether that's wildfire bomb, increase the initial damage by 20%, kill shot, bleed the target for 50% for over 6 seconds, or bombardier, wildfire, uh, wildfire bombs, cooldown is reset when quarantine assault is applied. When remove, birds of prey, kill shot, strike up to 3 additional targets. So there's a lot things going, there's a lot of these things going on with quarantine assault depending on your skills right so i really think it would be cool seeing more melee hunters i know a lot of melee hunters go for like the the trident and bfd right now as well um with the whole flanking stripe build so it's very intriguing to see what they might possibly do uh down the road as far as um you know melee hunter now in other terms of like you know range hunter i know a lot of um you know, hunters are also, like, really good with, you know, like, you know, uh, Khmer shot and explosive shot. You know, these are really strong, uh, especially leveling abilities, too. These are really good abilities um, that, you know, a lot of hunters, even PvP, they use, you know. And I've gotten hit with these many of times, and it is annoying as shit. Um, it's, it's very annoying. Um, but, however, if they were to give them lock and load, your range auto attacks have an 8% chance to trigger lock and load, causing your next aim shot to cost no focus and be instant. It's only going to make them so much stronger ranged and kiting. Because you have to understand, the way these abilities affect PvE and PvP are differently, right? So, like, in PvE, like, it's a, it's totally fine for a lot of these abilities to hit for what they're hitting. But in PvP, getting hit by ranged shots by a hunter, with how fast they already are, and how they kite, is completely insane. It's completely nuts. And, you know... Even though they're nerfing the hunter down, as, as, as in terms of nerfing their pets and keeping it fair and trying to, like, you know, even them out in the playing ground of PvP, especially in Warsong Gulch with all the issues happening then. I think it was, like, what was a post that we were talking about how pets in general just hit 25% 25, 25 more than everybody else. So, um, you know, even though the, the... What I'm trying to say is, is that even though what they're doing with range hunters will take a hit down the long road it's not okay for them to like totally nuke the entire class where now the pet's not viable anymore for the hunter to even use and you know marksman hunter is just not a fun class to use right so it's like you got to keep marksman hunters in the game no matter what you got to keep them where they're they're able to have a fair fight you know and and, and it goes down for the list for a lot of other classes that are slacking we're going to say the same thing you know because you don't want marksman hunters to feel like dog shit you don't want people's classes to feel like total trash so you want them to be you know uh they so they can adapt in later phases have better gear give them some very good runes as well just as any other class to keep them in the mix and be unique and different from other classes. So I think lock and load would be very interesting, especially on top of explosive shot and chimera shot, um, just to offer them something very you know nice to their utility kit overall. Um, but yeah, that that would be really intriguing if they did that. Um, but besides that. They also go into aspects. So aspect of the beast, uh, increasing damage and healing of your pet by uh, 30% of your abilities, and then increasing the effectiveness of your uh, pet's predator thirst, endurance training, and pathfinding passes by 50%. So they, they mention here, aspects are one of the core hunters for a fantasy class, uh, so why not add another one to the list? The beast master hunters uh, would need any additional damage and uh, utilities right now. A permanent buff like aspect of the beast would increase the overall damage potential of the hunter pets and their tankiness due to the increased effect from pet passes. Maybe People will not only get blasted by whim servants in PvP, but also see them become raid tanks in the uh, in the near future. Who knows? Now that is so funny because obviously you know Wildhead's a, you know I think everyone knows, including Wildhead themselves too, um, the writer of this article as well. That you know pets in general are obviously a problem, like I just talked about before. But giving hunters a mix of unique abilities to not let them fall off in the end game, because obviously there's so many other classes that are just going to out damage them naturally in classic error, um, you know, with other kits and hunters fall a little bit behind. They're more of, you know, responsibilities with like frost traps and all that stuff and kiting, uh, you know, different bosses in certain specific areas. So hunters have a really important job end game. Um, so it's nice to give them other abilities to not let them fall off and damage later on. Because, yes, the pets are completely fucking nuts right now. Yes, you did tank. You know, I'm sure many of your guilds had a hunter who you let the cat tank Kelris. And don't say you did it. I know you fuckers are doing it. 
because my boys were doing it too, all right? So it, it, it's totally understandable. And I don't hate the whole tank meta in PvE, but have it, in my opinion, what Blizzard should do is have it where pets are scaled differently in PvE compared to PvP. You know, fix that scaling issue. I'm sure they're working on it. They got their coders on it. I'm not saying they don't. But that's what they need to do. Have the way pets can tank in PvE different differentiate is that the word differentiate compared to what they do in pvp and then if that's properly scaled there's no problem you can have the dream of uh you know hunter pets being tanks no matter what you know that's awesome i think that's cool the fact that they could do that and you buff the shit out of the pet and the pet's strong as shit in pve only but in pvp you got to make it to the point where it's fair because the whole wind serpent meta this whole phase on top of like the scorpion thing the scorpoid you know that little vicious creature getting farmed by the, those guys in the wetlands and fighting a, a terminator t1000 it's absolutely fucking insane you know so i would say let's make this fair let's try to make this balance regardless of that let's move on to the mage now me personally i i like where the mage is at right now i don't know about you guys but i think the mage is in a good spot Maybe not as good as it should be, but the mage is going to get better, right? We all know this. We all know mages are going to get better no matter what. They're going to unlock better kits come next phase, more access to further things, maybe even increasing the frost spec viability as well so more people can go back to frost. Um, however, Arcane is looking really juicy right now. I play an alt, uh, an alt mage that I have, and fires are really amazing. I think fire and arcane are probably the best mage specs to use right now currently because frost is just slacking especially the biggest con right now of mages is mana by you know uh mana utility overall where it's just you have no mana you run out of it so fast so you're either popping mana potions which cost about like three four gold in the fucking market it's super expensive and you have to use so many different like types of uh, elixirs and your abilities cost a lot and it's it's a bit of a problem as far as like mana cost reduction and all the the mana issues in general so i understand mages pain right now mages are going through a big headache with that but when they do dish damage they dish damage i have a friend of mine he's a buddy in my guild he's probably the best mage in the guild uh, if one of the very few mages in the guild and he pops off a lot he does really good damage as a mage so i can see the potential he's a fire mage but i could see the potential but however uh giving arcane mages um and also i didn't even mention uh rejuvenation you know the restoration mages actually really good healers i dig this i dig the spec it reminds me of the whole final fantasy thing where you can off heal and do damage it's pretty sick um but Let's talk about this. It's safe to say the introduction to Heal Mage has been successful one overall. It's one of the staple spells for future Arcane Mage toolkits. Arcane Mage could fill the spot healing hole for Mage healers while also providing a decent movement tool for Arcane Mages in general. So Arcane Barrage launched several missiles at the enemy target, causing 4, 1, 4, 5 Arcane damage, 18% of the mana, 30 yard range. It's not bad. I think that's dope. Giving them something, you know, just to do, a quick base kit, you know, that's solid. I have no issues with that. Depending on how hard it truly hits, if it's going to keep smacking, We'll see how it's fair, you know fairly adjusted if they were to add that. Seemed pretty intriguing. Now this one was pretty cool. I've had some fucking crazy fights as a warrior, and it was horrible when uh, a mage had a summon like a water elemental. And I know they had that back, you know, in um, a while back, uh, going into I believe uh, TBC if I'm correct. Uh, but water elementals were actually nuts. Cause that's one other thing you got to worry about. So giving the water uh, elementals back to, you know, the mages, it's pretty sick, you know. Um, and it would bring, obviously, like they mentioned, more versatility to the Frost Mage Toolkit. So that would be pretty cool. I think it would uh, be a nice little addition to the game. And then Dragon's Breath, kind of similar to a, cold, uh, a Cone of Cold for my mages out here, uh, targets the cone in front of the caster, taking up to 442 fire damage between 382 and that number, and um, they're disoriented for 3 seconds. Any direct damage to the attack will revive the target, turns off your attack when used. So this would give you, you know, a chance to, um, you know, blast them, disorient them, and maybe even poly them, or blink away, do another, or just charge a big ability, or see what you could do to do some type of damage while they're disoriented. I think this is a pretty unique ability, pretty cool. Um, and fire, ma fire mages right now, they're just so good, so giving them another, like, uh, style of ability where it gives them kind of like a getaway card besides the, you know, what do you call it? The, the blink. Um, and, but obviously, you know, if they get, you know, ice block. I'm not sure. Do the mages get ice block next phase? I forget. I'm not a, a true mage by heart. You know what I mean? I played mage, but I, I, I don't... I, I forget everything, all right? My main class is paladins and warriors and warlocks. But I play the alt mage right now, so I think they do get ice block next phase, if I'm correct. I believe they do. Um, but besides that, let's go down. 
to the one and only, the most important class in the game, obviously, uh, at the current moment, and the only class you should be playing, the Paladin. Now, you guys know me. I, um, I went over this stuff in my videos, talking about what I personally want. Hold on one second. Chug the water. I felt dehydration for a minute. We can't have dehydration nation in this household. We can't. However, um, I talked about in my previous video what I wanted for the Paladin and how it's funny how Wowhead even mentioned earlier when we were talking about the Druid stuff about bringing Dragonflight style abilities uh, to, you know, Classic Sod and see how they fare in the game overall in Classic Era compared to um, a lot of other classes. And I think, you know, depending on how they do it, if Phase 2 Paladin can be either really fun and a really good time B, be really bad and be very um, underwhelming. Or C, be a mix of both and have hope for the future. Now, I'm, I'm having hope for 1 and 3. But if they fuck us with this one, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to feel. Um, I, now, they're talking about similar to Hunter Aspects. Paladins are famous for Aurors and Classic. A ton of design... Um, Space has been filled out for our enchanting towns across Paladin trees. So why not introduce uh, a way to enhance further, even completely change an R of your choice? Empowers your chosen R for eight seconds. Now, how exactly would this fare? Depending on what it does, right? Depending on what R like you choose to use, and depending on how it amplifies the specific R's is very intriguing. Is eight seconds enough is the question for a three minute cooldown, depending on how much damage it dishes or whether you're able to, you know, silence or negate effects longer. I, I mean, I'm not sure where they want to even go with this or what you get more armor for eight more seconds. I mean, our mastery sounds like a very intriguing ability in and itself. I mean, I'm looking at the ret. Increase healing when received by 50% when the effect is active. Crusader aura mounts be bonus by 60%. Concentration aura affected allies immune to... In oh, affects allies as well. Immune to interrupts and silences. But then at that point, it's like... You already have that one ability, which is the one that it's in the rune slot right now where you basically... Peer, uh, inspiring presence or uh, inspires uh, what, what's it called inspiring exemplar or whatever I don't use that fucking ability but basically it just like dispels fears around you and stuff like that not a very good really it's a forgettable rune or forgettable rune it's like whatever you know so I don't know if our master be or our mastery here I go stuttering again somebody somebody shut the fuck up please I don't know if this would be viable or not personally I, I think it's like yes maybe so there's a lot of better choices but if it's only going to be like three runes, like if it's only going to be three, then I'm not too sure. Now, the next one sounded cool. The next two actually sound cool. I'll say the next two that they are talking about. Avenging Wrath. So not, now here's what they say. Not a lot of classes have such iconic spells like Avenging Wrath in their toolkit. At this point in history, these wings showcase one of the most essential cooldowns across all three Paladin archetypes, which would make an excellent addition as a rune of phase two. Avenging Wrath. 8% of base of mana, 3 minute cooldown. Increase all damage and healing caused by 20% uh, percent for 20 seconds. Cannot be used within 30 seconds behind, uh, being the target of Divine Shield, Divine Protection, Hand of Protection, or using Lay of Hands on oneself. Now, I think this would be pretty sick. I actually like this one. I think 20 seconds makes a big fucking deal. Especially if you're, you know, healing yourself, if you're dishing out damage as a ret. Um, hell, even as, you know, prop. I think Avenging Wrath would be absolutely sick. I wouldn't mind this at all. Especially for a whopping 3 minute cooldown. Um, this is like a one time ability. But it would be kind of nutty too. In PvP. I could see this ability being fucking nuts. So, who knows? You know, the possibilities are endless. If they were to add something like this, this would be very cool. I wouldn't hate on it. I think this is one of the better runes that they mentioned on this, on this list. Uh, as far as of, you know, compared to Aura Mastery. Maybe I'm underwhelming or doubting the power of Aura, Ma or Aura Mastery, but I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of other options, right? But who knows? Maybe it could be good. Now, Divine Steed. This one's pretty dope. It's basically just a get-out-of-jail card. And and honestly, if you played uh, Diablo, right? I, like, you guys, 
might not know this, but or maybe you have, if you check the past, the history of my channel, I played a lot of Diablo. And I've come from like you know Diablo three and Diablo two and D two resurrected. And one of the coolest abilities that I love doing, especially in like on Paladins, like the ability to just leap on top of your charger. It's like a get out of jail free card, you know, increasing movement speed by a hundred percent. Like you usable while indoors or in combat. So it's like it's a pretty like, you know, sick ability. I think it's just really nice, especially if you need to chase someone down, you need to like hurry up or you need to run away. And I think it's a good ability to create distance and close the gap. So this is an amazing ability. And um, I would like it. I don't know. I think it would be pretty cool. It would be really interesting to see if they would add something like that. Now, they also talk a little bit about, they don't hit towards like a fourth rune, right? But this is the rumor going on right now that I mentioned in my one of my other Paladin videos about um, Paladins becoming like Death Knights in Season of Discovery by treading uh, the path of Arthas. Your connection to the light has been damaged. All holy, he uh, all holy healing you deal decreased by 50%, but all non-holy damage you deal is increased by 5%. So, if they were to go down the route of the unholy Paladin, you know, that sounds like a very interesting concept. You know, like you were against the light for the darkness type of thing. Um, I, I can dig it. I would like it. I, I think it sounds very intriguing. I wouldn't mind going down this path, to be honest, and if it dishes more damage, you know, as like kind of like a, a dark ret paladin, you know, or a de uh, not like a death knight, but a, like an unholy ret paladin. Um, I don't know. It just sounds it sounds intriguing. Who knows? But. You know, the world is an oyster at this point for Blizzard, you know, so let's see what happens. Let's go into Priest. Now, like I said, Priest are um, a really good spot right now in uh, Classic, Sod, at least. Uh, not so much of Shadow Priest, and I really want Shadow Priest to be viable. I think Shadow Priest is a cool-ass class. I actually had a, a, one of our guild members tonight did really good damage on one of the fights on Lady Severus uh, as a Shadow Priest, believe it or not, and... I can see the potential, uh, even like what they're saying, like Balance Druids, Shadow Priests have a lot usual hybrid DPS in Classic. So um, introducing straightforward way to deal uh, decent direct damage, which solved the issue for many Shadow issues. Um, another central uh, Shadow issue is mana, so baking some mana regen into Mind Spike would kill two Shadow Birds with one stone. Mind Spike, blast the target for a certain amount of damage or spell power of uh, Shadow Frost damage. Now, I think that would be really sick. You give them another... Um, you know, way to dish out really quick damage. One of my buddies was talking about adding Vampiric Touch, you know, to the game, and that would be very intriguing for Shadow Priests. I think there is a way to make Shadow Priests really a badass class, and just like I mentioned before, with like the Paladin going to like an Old and Holy Paladin or a Dark Paladin, you know, Shadow Priest is just a cool way of like just you know stirring away from the light and using your abilities more as dark damage and you know leeching style abilities right and and dot damage you know it's really heavy on the dot damage so i think it'd be cool if they go down this route and give shadow priest a lot of crazy shit in phase two or just at least make them more viable in the end game of things because people like to play that class and they're really good in pvp if you ever fought a priest in pvp you know the fucking life out there is a torture so let's go into the next one discipline priest it's one of the most unique spells in the Discipline Toolkit. Rapture would add a great utility to Priest and its allies in Season Discovery. There are a metric ton of amazing cooldowns in Priest history, but a passive effect that uh, promotes dynamic power, word, shield gameplay, which rewards both and the player and their allies. Sounds like something Priest in Classic would want. Rapture. When your power word shield is completely absorbed and spelled, you are instantly energized with 1.5% uh, of your total mana, and you have a 33% chance to energize your shield target with 2 total percent of mana. 8 rage, 16 energy, 32 ruining power. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds. This would be nuts. Plain and simple. Especially just for, like, you know, um, either a druid or, you know, ruining power, or just rage in general for a fucking, um, whatchamacallit, a warrior. Or, um, you know, 2% total mana, which is even good for prop paladins. Obviously, you know, tanking paladin. Um, this is good. Rapture would be absolutely sick. So having something that, you know, they can get energized with and giving them the chance to get that stuff back, that precious, you know, resource, you know, more resource you get, the more damage you output, you know. So that would be actually really sick. I would love to see that in the Discipline Toolkit, see if they were introduced that into Phase 2.
And then Lightweaver. As one of the new priest abilities in our list, Dragonflight Holy Priest talents reads incredibly straightforward but also very efficient. Or rewards the use of two staple heal spells in the Holy Priest toolkit. Lightweaver. Flash heal reduces the cast time of your next heal within 20 seconds by 30% and increase its healing done by 15%. Stacks up to two times. Now, I think this is an absolutely insane ability. You know, they are giving the, the priest so much more utility if they were to add something like this. However... Given the fact that priests are already insane in PvP, and the you know obviously in the long run of things, priests are going to get only more stronger and stronger. Um, when in terms of how you know their survivability is kind of endless at times, it feels like you're hitting a tank and they're not dying. But I feel like giving them something like this would be extremely nuts, especially for just straight up healing priests. You know. Um, I just feel like priests are just re in a really good spot right now. So if you give them something like this, you're just only adding something else to the rotational belt that they have. They have already, like, you know, the best healing kit in the game. So you give something like this, now it's just going to be more massive blast of heals. But then again, this is a good thing. Also, if you look at it from a PvE concept, they can probably keep, you know, the they could probably keep, like, the entire raid alive. Not that they already don't, but just imagine, like, who knows how crazier they get with the runes for priests to the point where, like, you probably not even need to consider bringing many healers for certain things because if they were to make priests this OP, not saying that they aren't right now, they're pretty in a pretty strong spot as in terms of, like, how much healing they did. I mean, hell, they had to nerf the amount of healing per done by, like, 20%. And one of my friends right now um, who's in our guild, uh, she doesn't even notice it. She doesn't even notice, like, the, the nerf that they did. So, Prees are in a pretty strong healing spot right now. Especially in PvP when you got to focus on the priest because they will keep the fight going forever. So, I'm a little concerned about this, but at the same time, I'm not going to hate it. So, you know, I'm just speaking on it from an external point of view. I don't know every single class, guys. So, let's, let me, let's get one thing straight, too. Because I know there's probably going to be that guy in the video that mentions this. I don't know every single class. I'm going over each class with you um, as best as I can to my ability. I, I know what most classes do, right? In terms of like how I PvP them in the past, as in terms of classic error uh, in general uh, from my experience. But I'm going over and learning new things as we go to, right? So learning these new runes, seeing these different things from future expansions that I never even play, like Dragonflight and stuff like that. This is very interesting and intriguing stuff to me. So if I'm wrong on things, I'm not always going to be correct, but that's why you guys are there for me to educate me and help me learn some better things in terms of all these classes and rotations and what you think about my opinions and whether you like them or tell me to shove them. Either way, I'm here to direct the stuff to you and we bounce stuff off each other. And that's the best way I can go about it, all right? But besides that, Rogue. Now, in my opinion, I think Rogue is, if not the best damage classing uh, spec to play right now in the game, besides Warrior, right? I mean, obviously, Warrior is just, like, hitting incredibly hard right now with the help of a lot of things around it, you know, just like with many classes. But Rogue is just incredibly good right now. The one thing I think they're lacking is an AoE, which we're about to dive into besides, but we're going to go into this first, talk about Roll of Bones. So this finisher, which has been added to the Rogue uh, toolkit during Legion, embraces the gambling Rogue uh, fantasy. Some of the six buffs it provides may be too situational in a classic setting, but what if its development team decided to introduce new, more generic buffs that all Rogue archetypes could profit from? Roll of Bones. Finishing move that rolls the dice of fate, providing a random in combat enchantment lasts longer per combo point. So if you get five points, 36 seconds, you would be able to... Let's see this. Let's actually read that because I'm intrigued. Uh, deeper strat gem, six points into 42 seconds. So the spell gives you one of the two or five possible or five of these possible buffs. Broadside, your combo point generates abilities, generate one additional combo point and deals 15% increased damage to the duration of roll of bones. Buried treasure, your base energy rege uh, regeneration is increased by 5 per sec for the duration of this ability. Grand melee, blades fury damage 10%, increased damage to uh, nearby enemies, and just a flat 5% increased like off the rip. And then Ruthless Precision. Increased critical strike chance between between the eyes, 60%, and critical strike chance of all other abilities by 50% during the duration of uh, the, this ability as well. Skull and Crossbones. Cause Sinister Strike, uh, Sinister Strike to have an additional 25% uh, 25 chance of striking an additional time during the duration of this. So it would have an additional 30% striking an additional time. That's insane. 
That's absolutely insane. And then true bearing. Finishing move reduces the rain cooldown of many of your abilities by 0.5 seconds per combo point. I don't know about this. <laughs> this this was a lot to go over. All, all I'm hearing, okay, I'm going to keep it a buck. All I'm hearing is rogues are just going to fuck you up, all right? So this is where I'm saying my... my, my my knowledge is a little limited. I, I, I don't especially know every single thing about rogues, especially an ability like this, like Roll of Bones, which gives you like a... It's kind of c cool in a way. It's like a Dungeons & Dragons dice mechanic game, and you just get random buffs, you know, or random things that happen. I kind of dig that, honestly. As a rogue, I think that would be pretty badass too, depending on what you get, and you get lucky, and you get all five or some crazy shit, or five of the six, whatever, and you just pop off. I think that's pretty sick. Now, this is what I actually wanted to talk about too. Um, I but, but before I even jump into that, I will say it is sick, but there is a chance that could be extremely broken, right? Like rogues already are going to get nuttier the more the phases go, and they unlock their further kits, and things are going to get insane, especially in PvP and late game PVE, right? Um, but overall, that would be a cool concept to add to the rogue fantasy, and I think that would be cool. Now, I was kind of considering, like, what if they added, like, rogue range spec? Like, I, I kind of, like, not, not to, like, say, like, they need to alter the trees, but, like, give them something where it's, like, a rune where now rogues can, like, dual wield or something. I Because I've been played a lot of other, like, games, right? Like, you know, um, other MMOs that have had, um, for example, like, I played Lost Ark, right? I'll just talk about it. I'll just say it straight up. I played Lost Ark, and the Gunslinger, right, kind of has, like, a rogue kind of element to it where it's quick on its feet, and it has, like, muskets, kind of. And, like, you just, you know, be, be able to do a lot of range-style damage. So given the rogue, like, almost like a way where it can do, like, range damage, I thought it would be pretty cool. I was discussing with a couple of my rogue friends about it, and, you know, they think a rogue spec like of, like, that or a rune being able to do range stuff would be pretty interesting, you know? I don't know how they would play about it, obviously, with the skill trees and the natural stuff that they already have in the talent tree, so it would be kind of hard. But overall, if they don't even want to go down that route, I totally get it. That's just theory crafting. But let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, fan of Knives, obviously I've heard of this. This is a classic. Giving them the AoE that they need, right? Instantly throw both weapons on all targets within 8 yards, causing a massive amount of 105% weapon damage with daggers and 70% weapon damage with all other weapons. So, it's a phenomenal ability. I've, I've been, I've seen Phantom Knives before. I played in Wrath. So, you know, having that would be nuts because now you give rogue tanks something to do about AoE issues. The biggest problem with rogue tanks right now is they have no AoE and holding threat is a problem. So you give them Phantom Knives, you give a way for rogues to be viable, especially geared out rogues. A geared out rogue is incredible. It's insane. I mean, you don't need even a geared out rogue to take down the best of people in this game, right? I mean, a smart rogue knows what to do. But a geared out rogue, especially a rogue tank with an AoE, sounds extremely juicy. Now, this is one, the one I'm about to go into, is something I actually wanted to talk about. Oh, wow, this is actually a longer video, 37 minutes. We'll try to cut it a little bit shorter here and speed it up. But basically, making combo points shared across all enemies. And this is something that my friends have been talking about, too. And they're saying, like, listen, like, man, this is, like, one of the biggest issues. The fact that, you know... Other rogues can't stack their combo points, and it's been an issue. So having the thing to where you can store all your combo points across all targets would just be a massive quality update for the rogue, right? And it's exactly what they're saying here, too. Like, you would be able to increase the amount of fun the rogue can do by dishing so much more damage to everything else. Now, that would also affect in PvP as well, because now you can stack your combo points across anything that you're hitting, giving the way for the rogue to even though it lacks its AoE damage if it didn't get Fan of Knives, but at least you give it the ability that it can pop off and pop its combo points on any other target if it needs to and fight multiple targets just like with the warrior you know a warrior has whirlwind naturally and it can fight multiple targets it has you know ways or get sliced both give rogues that opportunity to do so as well and i think that's pretty fair to be honest shaman i have no idea how shamans work i haven't played shaman i i also knew about like elemental shamans when i was a kid so my knowledge is very low on this so we're just gonna read it out all right so let's talk about it let me make sure my camera's right so shamans sundering Two-handed only. The two-handed enchantment shaman uh, fantasy is a, a community favorite, but it's in a great peril. 
adding uh, exclusive spells, only castable with two uh, handed weapons is very restrictive, but also offers a solution. The version of Sundering, a talent introducing back during Legion, would be a flavorful visceral spell that perfectly showcases the fantasy of a two handed wheeling master of the elements. So, Sundering shatters the line of earth in front of uh, you with your main hand weapon, causing 184% attack power, depending on what they do. Flame strike damage and incapacitating them. Um, any enemy hit for two seconds. So, giving the Shaman Fantasy, like, being able to use two-hand spec, that sounds very interesting. Um, they they seem like a very cool class. I dig the concepts of the Shaman, you know, having all the totems, the slowdown, the big blasting abilities that they do. And I hear Shamans are doing really good from what I heard on the Horde side. They are killing it, as in terms of... Um, Maybe not damage, but I would say more of as a tank spec. And they're decent healers. They're not like the best, but they're decent, right? Um, but I think it would be very intriguing to see what they do. Uh, and, and they're pretty good damage, obviously, in PvP. I get, uh, there's times I get smacked by a Shaman. If I get hit by them, it hurts. So I giving them, like, you know, a two-handed spec or, like, a way to... I mean, they already got that, right? I think they have the two-handed spec, but, like, like the whole Rockbiter stuff. Or maybe I'm incorrect. Correct me if they're shamans. I don't know much about shamans. But giving this this option would be very nice. And um, having that two-handed shaman fantasy sounds really exciting. It sounds pretty dope. Uh, and then, you know, now you would have the question of two-handed shamans rolling on two-handed-based weapons. Especially on the Horde side, right? So, I think that sounds pretty dope. I th it's pretty cool, honestly. There, there's a lot of very interesting... Um, rotations from what I've seen of what shamans have. So giving them this would be something just to add it to their kit. Uh, summon an Earth Elemental. Shaman tanking has been a successful experiment in Season of Discovery so far. This is what I heard. Uh, a decent defensive cooldown that also comes with a beefy Earth Elemental would make an excellent addition to Classic Shaman Toolkit. Uh, calls for for Greater Earth Elemental protect you and your allies for one minute. While the Elemental is active, your maximum health is increased by 50%. So you're just giving them more tankiness. And it's a, a whopping 5-minute cooldown. You're giving them a way for them to increase their tankiness, control the battlefield, control the PvE uh, you know, zone, uh, as in terms of what they offer in uh, terms of tankiness, protection, and, you know, control of the field, right? So I, I dig this. I think this is pretty cool. And here's another one. Totem utility wasn't really a part of design uh, space in Classic. This is why spells like tot Totemic Recall has been added and treated as no-brainers later on. As totems are vital parts to Classic Shaman gameplay experience, adding this spell would just make them an incredible amount of sense. Returns your totem to Earth, giving you 25% of mana required to cast each totem destroyed by Totemic Recall. That would be kind of nuts. Um, the fact that you're able to just automatically bring back more totems, these are one of the things that in PvP, especially as a paladin, you know, it is kind of scary when you're getting slowed down, you're getting tremored, all this stuff is going on from these totems, and you're completely getting blasted by them. Totems play a big area of effect in PvP, especially. So, I mean... At the end of the day, if they want to do this for shamans, it's only going to increase their strength in PvP and also in PvE as well, right? So it's very cool. Um, I, I I think it's dope if they wanted to add these style of things to shamans. Like I said, I'm not a big shaman head. I think the class has always been a pretty interesting and sick class. I just never gave it a shot. But let's go down to the Warlock class I actually do know and played. So... The Demonology Fantasy has evolved quite a bit in the last few years in retail, especially when it comes to temporary minions. Hand of Gul'dan would be temporarily summoned three regular imps, which certainly make a flavorful engaging damaging, uh, damaging cooldown, and which could also profit from classic warlock talents like improved fireball. The Hand of Gul'dan calls down a demonic meteor full of wild imps, which bursts forth to attack the target. Deals up to a certain amount of spell power, shadow flame damage, on impact to all enemies within eight yards. Hand of Doom applies a doom to each target and summons three wild imps based on the soul shards consumed this would be really nuts because the biggest problem from what i've seen with warlock and classic is that down the line going for certain depending on where you go down the talent tree warlocks get especially like if you want to go down like affliction warlock phase two there's a lot of wasted talents that you're gonna start having so it's like talents that don't really matter and you're wasting your points in certain areas to get other talents so maybe going down the demonology tree or going down the um i'm sorry the destruction tree is more preferred and giving them something like of this 
uh, this ability to, you know, cause more rapid amount of damage based on summons, this would just be a demonology's dream, you know, having an army of the dead doing your bidding. And I think this would be pretty, pretty damn cool because right now Metamorphosis Warlock is extremely nuts. I know they're in a state where like they just life drain the shit out of you in PvP, but they are really good tanks. My, my boy, he's a he's a Warlock tank and he, he smacks and he does pretty good da uh, damage when he's out of the, the demon form. But I've always liked the whole Metamorphosis Warlock. I thought it was sick in Wrath as well. I did it in Wrath when I was doing like Shadow Cleese. I, I thought it was dope. Um, I, I like the class. I like the, the whole concept of like, you know, basically being a demon and I, I don't know i think that would be a dope room um however let's go into the chaos bowl now this is something i like i like to see more warlocks doing too um because chaos bowl is such a dope ability you know the piercing of this ability is really nice so what came uh chaos ball being present in season discovery having would be a great situation to pick in all sorts of content hard casting not periodic warlock damage spells have always felt chunky and one-dimensional and classic so this ability would introduce cat uh introduce with cataclysm would tackle the issue i never played cataclysm though so havoc marks a target with havoc for 12 seconds causing your single target spells to sh also strike the havoc victim for 60 percent of the damage dealt so this would be a nutty ability to add towards Warlocks. Because Warlocks and PvP already have a pretty strong kit, right? As we know of the past in Classic Era, back then, right? But right now, in PvE, Warlocks are suffering with some things that they're missing out of currently in Phase 1. So giving them more options like this, giving them more damage single target spell abilities to cause them to take more damage overall is something that these type of warlocks need. This is extremely juicy, and I like this. I think this would be very interesting to give them more style of effects like this. Burning Rush. Without a doubt, warlocks in Classic lack proper movement options. This is absolutely true. Warlocks lack movement. If you're not doing your Howl of Terrors, then you're trying to fear. You really don't have a lot of options in terms of movement. Warlocks are really just trying to cast their abilities and kite, create distance so giving them a movement option would change the game for the warlock class uh we thought about adding demonic circle obviously it's a teleport i've seen this in wrath but even then you know i remember when i was using to fight deaf knights it was horrible this didn't work out too much and deaf knights really just were shitting on us it would work against a lot of other classes but this was even tough to manage to pull off now then again i'm not i wasn't the best warlock all, of all time I was pretty ass, but I did pretty good damage in my raid groups when I was playing in Wrath. And I think, you know, Demonic Circle is a cool ability, but something like this, Burning Rush, seems interesting. Increase your movement speed by 50%, but also damages you for 4% of your maximum health every one second. Movement impairment effects may not reduce you below 100% of normal movement speed. Last until uh, cancelled. Now, this is pretty dope, because now the Warlock is fast. The Warlock is quick. You know, the Warlock doesn't need to rely on just standing still, or if they possibly add a Demonic Circle, doing a Teleport, which I wouldn't mind if they added, um, since there's no Death Knights, uh, you know, this time around, who knows what they do. But I just think it'd be pretty intriguing to see if they gave the Warlock something else that they could be quicker upon, to not rely on, you know, using the Fears every single time that they need to. Not saying that that's not a choice, but giving them movement sounds pretty dope. And finally, the Warrior. Let's hopefully we can not get to an hour. We're going to try to get to 50 minutes. Bladestorm. If you already know, Bladestorm, amazing ability. If they add this to Classic, as it is already, um, it would be pretty nuts. And, you know, adding Warbringer certainly help. Bladestorm would be another step in the right direction. Um, it's one of the coolest spells of all time. I mean, come on. Like, Bladestorm was sick. I remember when I did the, the first time I PvP'd my boy outside of Stormwind, and I popped his ability on him. He dead, he dead ass, he logged off, I logged off, and we never, we never played on those characters again because we wound up doing some stuff on Horde. But it was the funnest shit because Bladestorm is just an unstoppable move. It's crazy how much damage it dishes out extremely fast. You're immune to anything for at least a couple seconds, and I mean, it's pretty sick. And also generates rage, right? So I think it'd be cool. Now I actually saw a little bit about the next one we're about to talk about. I think this would be interesting. So... I never played Warlords of Draenor. I played, I think, a little bit, but I, I didn't play it too much. I, I took it, like, I think a couple days on trying it out, but it wasn't really that fun. I didn't have fun. But, basically, Prot Warriors had a window of six weeks where they had a lot of fun in PvE. And absolutely dominating PvP. Thanks to Gladiator Stance. Shortly after, the ability got nerfed in the uh, to the ground and removed with the release of Legion. 
Nine years later, Gladiator Stance appeared in the Season of Discovery game files. So this has been data mined. So there is hope the Stance will increase all physical damage and replace Shield Block with Shield Charge might return. That would be very interesting. Giving them uh, a warrior another stance-based ability between the four natural stances that they have, or the three natural stances they have, so now you have four, right? Um, that would be kind of sick. And I, I got, you know, a little tempted to play a warrior. Don't get me wrong. I, I've uh, Naturally, that's my class. And I know that sounds nuts as it's coming from, you know, a dude who's been making tons of Rhett Paladin videos because I just really wanted to play Rhett Paladin this time around. I, I, I really wanted to try the class out. I enjoyed it in private servers when I was playing um, WoW Hardcore private servers. And I just really wanted to try it in Sod. And I'm loving Rhett. But Warrior was my heart class because it just... There was nothing better than, you know, hitting somebody. Like, back when I was playing uh, TBC with Deep Thunder, you know? And just going into, like, you know, <clears throat> Eye of the Storm and smacking people up and then getting into Wrath messing around with Blainstorm a little bit, and then eventually I, I rolled into an Undead Warlock. But Warrior was uh, Warrior was fun as shit, man. There was so much stuff that you could do with Warrior, whether you're doing Fury Prod or, or uh, Arms. Arms was my favorite spec. Um, but yeah, good times. Let's not get emotional about it. All right, calm the fuck down, guys. Shockwave. A hard AoE control. It's a hot flame to play with in classic rule set. Shockwave is a great ability for warrior archetypes to not put on this list, since it's a great way to interrupt targets in addition to the super conditional uh, pummel. So, Shockwave sends a wave force and a frontal cone causing 20% attack power damage and stunning all enemies within 10 yards for 2 seconds. Giving Warrior something like this, on top of Intimidation Shout, on top of Pummel, on top of Charges and Interrupts, and the ability to switch to a, you know, a Sword and Shield or, you know, whatever you have. Just, you know, just Smash and Bash spec. You know, not spec, sorry. Be being able to give them all these things is what I'm trying to fucking say. Jeez is kind of nuts so if you were to give them shockwave and if they were to have blade storm my lord you're getting crazy with this and if you give them gladiator stance with shield charge i mean who knows the the world is endless for a warrior inside and i'm kind of scared that warriors are just going to be the best class in the game and i that's my speculation because they're the best right now but they might be the best class in the game and the end of sod so who the fuck knows? There's a chance I might make a fucking warrior. Besides that, guys, whew, that's a lot of talking. That's the end of the video. 50 fucking one minutes, all right? That was a juicy one for you guys. Um, I hope you've been enjoying content, and I, I look forward to post more. I really wanted to make this video out, and I really hope to see what you guys say in the comments below. If you're watching this at work, you're watching this at home, if it's snowing, if it's 10 degrees, if you're you know eating pizza rolls, whatever the fuck you're doing. I hope you enjoy the content. Much love, amigos. I'm out. Keep on keeping on. I'll see you in the next one. I almost broke my camera. Peace.